Hi, this is Corey, and this is my tutorial that I created about how to use Facebook plugins. In this tutorial, I'll show you what Facebook plugins are, why you'd want to use them, where to get them, and then I'll show you two demos. Um, one where you'll add plugins to a web page, and then a second um, demonstration about how to generate plugins using PHP. And this is where I'll be going next. Okay, now we'll go to developers.facebook.com and click on the documentation link where you'll see the social plugins. Social plugins for Facebook are like little widgets that you can use in your applications, your web applications and your uh, Facebook applications. And you'll see all of the plugins they have offered here. In my first demo, I'm going to show you how to customize these and then put them on a website. In my second demo, we'll work on displaying these dynamically, pulling data from a database. In the first demo, I'll show you plugin basics and how to customize the plugins on the Facebook developer documentation site and then add them to a web page. Before we dive into the code of demo one, I'm going to show you an overview of what it is we're, we're going to do. So we will create a web page in our favorite IDE. Um, I'm using a trial version of Visual Studio. Then we'll decide which plugins to use that I want to cut and paste uh, by going to the Facebook um, developer page for plugins. And then I'll configure them there so that you can see how I configure them. It's really easy. Then I'll cut and paste back into uh, the, web, the web page that we've designed, and then we'll op upload it to the server. So that's the whole process for demo one, and we'll make that one short. OK, so now for demo one, I'm going to open up Visual Studio. And I'll open the, the HTML page that I created to display the, the plugin example. And here it is. <clears throat> and I'll show you what I have. And I've I've used the plugins to um, to design a Facebook plugin page around the Google URL. Um, you can see the the like button. You can like this. You can send it um, to send the. Uh, a message about Google to a friend. You can like um, like Google on Facebook, um, and this is the the Facebook feed for that. Um, there's a recent activity feed here, and I'll show you um, how to change what this looks like by going to the activity feed, and then here here are the configurable options. So I'm going to type in Google. Dot com, and then you'll see all of this recent activity. I want to make the width 450, and then I'd like to change it to dark, because that looks neat. And then I'm going to get code, and I can take either of these. I'm going to take this one, and I'll paste it into the activity feed. So here's the recent activity. And I'll just I'll just cut and paste and see what that does here. And back over to my local host, I'll reload it. And there it is. This is the recent activity change. So um, you can do similar things and just cut and paste those plugins into your web, web page. In the second demo, I'll show you a Facebook application that I wrote um, that pulls database records from a MySQL database with PHP and dynamically creates the plugins using the data. So you don't need to um, modify the page um, like you would if it had been a static web page with cut and paste plugins. 
um, using PHP and a backend database, you can um, create a, a dynamically generated way to um, display plugins. And that means that you can, um, to change what is displayed on the page, you just add, delete, or change a record in the database, and the page will automatically ref reflect the changes. Okay, in our second demo, let's overview what we'll be doing. This is the application creation process. Um, plan the application, design and implement the database. So first, um, I designed and implemented the database, uploaded the data, because I had it all in an Excel sheet. Um, then we'll create um, the application page, loop through the records in the database, um, then upload that to the web server, then we'll go to Facebook and establish and configure the application on Facebook, which will then point to where I'm hosting it on the web server. Then we'll um, make sure that our Facebook app ID, the unique app ID for the application on Facebook, is in the PHP code, and I'll show you where that is. Okay, first I'm going to show you the application and what it looks like to users. I named it Corey's Tutorial, Cast Your Soda Pop Liking Vote. I'm going to click on that. It's going to take us to the App About page for my application. And I'm going to click on Go to App. And this is what the end result looks like. And um, right here, you'll see a list of sodas and a like button and the count of how many people have liked it. These are the dynamically generated plugins. I'll show you what I initially had to do to get data, uh, the database uh, table designed, and then data into the database so that we would have something to pull. So now we're looking at the MySQL admin on my GoDaddy server. Now here we are at the PHP page that I've already uploaded to the server using my FTP program. Um, in the text editor, this page looks like this. It's just code. But when a user hits this page via their web browser, it'll look like the Facebook application that I previously showed you. Now I'm going to point out the significant features of the code. And the first thing I want to point out is the Facebook app ID. Um, we can find that on line 16. Um, this is where you would put the app ID. Um, and then also on line 61. Uh, to, and this identifies the activity as being generated by the Facebook application. And um, so here's the other area here the, with the app ID. Um, now let's look at how we're going to dynamically generate the plugins. Um, first, at line 25, um, I'm, I'm storing the SQL to a variable, and then at line 26, uh, I'm creating a link to connect to the database. And at line 31, I'm selecting the database um, and passing the um, MySQL select function, um, my link. Uh, and now at line 37, I can execute the, um, the SQL statement uh, so that I have records to loop through. Um, the dynamic button generating happens here at this while loop. Um, and I'm grabbing an array here at line 55. Uh, it's, a, it's an array of the results of each record set, so I can use the elements in the plugin during each iteration of the loop. Um, and then the, the result and then bracket soda um, is so that we know what soda, um, uh, what soda um, this plugin pertains to. Um, then the result href right here, the result href, um, is the URL passed to the plugin so that when a user clicks on it, um, it clicks on the like button, that um, that like will be associated with, the, with that page. Um, and that, that URL also allows the plugin to identify how many people have liked um, that so does Facebook page. And after the while loops through all the records, then we're done. Um, and then we can close out the link, and, um, and then the page is viewable to the user.